just up there, the second hedge up on the ridge is a Roman road, which leads down, down to the stream down here. That field there in the Saxon Charter of, um, the second Saxon Charter of Whitney, Witten Aia, it is uh, known, it says, go to the place where the connectors lie, and connectors later on becomes knights, uh, can be thought of as servant. Behind me is a Roman villa, uh, where well you can see that, uh, that tree over there. Uh, and that Roman villa is probably uh, is there for ritual reasons. And within its ruined walls were buried 20 men, four of whom had sword wounds, all pointing, all buried in, um, some of which were stone-lined stone -lined graves pointing uh, east to west. Tell me I'm not making too much of this. This is the Roman road I was talking about, and uh, there's a byway here, even uh, along it, even today, uh, which isn't shown on the map, isn't it? Incidentally, <laughs> it's just one of those those uh, white roads with black uh, roads with black uh, outlines where you're never quite sure they're private or not. Anyway, the um, the stream I've just left, the little valley, that's where the Roman um, uh, settlement is, and to compound the, uh, the mystery even further, well certainly you know, the argument, the evidence gets compounded in the sense it's retained its British name. And this isn't a big river, this is a little stream. And they hardly ever, the Anglo-Saxon dominated areas, hardly ever retain their British, that is the ancestors of the Welsh, their name, and it's Itchin. So this field here, uh, I'm next to, in the Anglo-Saxon Charter of Whitney, it is uh, Itchenesfeld, um, the open open land of the Itchin. And uh, Itchin is, you know, so if you think of all the um, watercourses that uh, are called Itchin in England, uh, it fits in within that um, within that set of names. And according to Margaret Gelling, and she's the godmother of um, of. Uh, toponyms as a historical uh, sign, uh, signs to the past. Uh, she says that uh, it's uh, an indication of the British, that is the uh, very early Welsh, um, them coexisting with the English, the, the Anglo-Saxons. And the reason I think they managed to coexist and not be completely dominated was the 20 men buried, buried in that Roman villa. Each one ceremonially buried, they weren't just dumped there. Uh, they all have the same alignment. They have uh, stone-lined graves, they have grave goods. But how do we know that they are British uh, and not Anglo-Saxons? They were considered Anglo-Saxons. When this was dug in the 60s, they thought these were Anglo-Saxons. They had r late Roman belts on them military belts, uh, but the Anglo-Saxons had them as well. But since then we've had better science, so we've got a situation where um, they took the teeth enamel of, of some of these people here 
and they've worked out that they, they came from southwest Britain, that is Cornwall or Devon or somewhere like that. And they weren't Anglo Saxon. covered in bluebells in May. And uh, they're coming up now, you know, the, the greenery of the, green, of the bluebell is coming up really nicely, it's covering everything. And uh, I do remember a woods not far from here last year where I covered this sort of area. So I ought to, for context purposes, I ought to point that out. So um, have a look. Uh, I'll put a link in. And that was about the Sugar Road and uh, Ackerman Street, which is uh, a Roman road. And we need to talk about that. godless algorithm thinks that you might like to watch this uh, video next um, but uh, nonetheless thank you thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one